Hi, I'm Cheryl Ann from Cherry Lane's Cupcakes and today I'm going to show you how to bake these Rainbow Rose Meringue Cookies. You really only need very simple ingredients to achieve this, so let's get straight into it! You will need 3 quarters of a cup of custard sugar, a quarter teaspoon of cream of tartar, 3 large egg whites, as well as a really clean, grease-free glass or metal mixing bowl. You want to avoid using plastic bowls because plastic bowls can have a leftover grease which will prevent your whites from getting stiff. Firstly, start by separating your egg yolks from your egg whites. So you just crack your egg into half and toss the yolk back and forth between the shells allowing the egg white to fall into a small bowl down below. A general rule of thumb is that when making meringues, for every egg white that you use, you want to make sure that you use at least a quarter cup of custard sugar. It is also very important that your sugar is a super fine type of sugar or custard sugar. If not, you want to probably process that in a food processor for about 30 seconds before you want to incorporate that into your egg whites. So anyways, for this video demonstration, I only use two eggs because my oven is quite small and Meringues don't sit well on the counter, so you have to bake them immediately after you whip them up. So now I'm just separating all my eggs, and once I've done that, I just pour that into my really clean metal mixing bowl. And also make sure that the whisk that you are using is also really clean. So now I just beat that on a medium speed until my egg whites become foamy and they don't really form stiff peaks or any kind of peaks but they kind of still hold their shape a little bit like as you can see you can the curve is still there it doesn't just fall flat down and then now I just sift in my cream of tartar the reason why I sifted it is so that the cream of tartar is gonna be evenly distributed and not chunky when I put it into my egg whites so I just Sifted it in and continued beating that until it slowly started becoming stiffer and looked something like this. And then I just added in my sugar a little bit at a time, about a couple tablespoons, and then just keep beating that. You don't want to add in all of your sugar at once because that will take a lot longer for the sugar to dissolve in your egg whites. So you want to gradually beat it in until it's completely smooth and not gritty at all. So I just continued this process by slowly adding in my sugar and beating it on still on medium speed. And then once I finished incorporating all of my sugar inside, I switched it onto high and kept beating that for about half a minute, I'd say, until my meringue mixture looks really glossy and just completely white and reaches stiff peaks. Stiff peaks are like this. When you lift up your whisk from your mixture, it should form a little peak that will just be pointy and will not fall down again. Next, just separate your mixture into however many colours you wish to make. Here I'm just using three colours, just yellow, red and blue. Personally, I find that you don't really need to mix that many colours for this because when you put it into your piping bag, the colours will mix a little bit so you have actually more than just three colours in your roses later on. So I just started by just adding a drop of each colour into each bowl separately and just slowly tried to fold it in. I didn't stir it because I didn't want to get rid of any of the air that I had whipped into my meringues. So you just gradually do so and add more food colouring if you want a more vibrant colour but here I only added a drop each so my roses came out a more paler and pastel -y tone than a vibrant coloured one. So you just keep folding it in and be careful not to add too much food colouring because typically when you add food colouring into your meringues, you want to add it in while you are beating it. But because you are just stirring it in, you don't want to add too much or else your meringues might fall. And you will know that you are done folding in your food colouring when there are minimal streaks inside. So now you just get a piping bag and a Wilton 2D star tip and you just put it into your piping bag, push it all the way down, cutting off the tip and making a little stopper, keep pushing until the entire shade sticks out. So now you just roll down your bag, creating like a little well at the end. So here I'm just trying to make a neater well looking thing so that it'll be easier for me to put in my meringue mixture. So once I've done that, I just started by adding in a bit of the yellow. I tried to put it towards the side. As you can see, I'm not really putting it directly um, over where the 
tip starts, if that makes sense. So I'm just putting it to the side, and then I get the blue, and I put it to another side, and then the pink on another side. A little tip is that to achieve a more colorful meringue is to take smaller spoonfuls of your mixture as you put the different colors on top of each other because that would ensure that each of your roses get more of the different colors at once. So once I've done that, I just try to roll the bag up so that my well becomes deeper. And if you've done the rainbow cupcakes before, this is the exact same method, but the thing is that meringues are much more delicate, so rolling it up might be harder. And you don't want to get the heat from your hands to like make your meringues just fall apart. So you just continue building the different colors in your piping bag until you reach the end. And then just leave a little bit of space at the end so that you can roll it up and twist it twice and just begin piping. Make sure that more than one color comes out of your tip first before you start piping on your beautiful little rainbow roses on a baking tray lined with baking paper. During this time, make sure your oven is preheated to 90 degrees Celsius and you will have to bake these for at least an hour and a half to an hour and 45 minutes. The whole idea behind it is just to dry out the meringues. So it really takes quite long. Do not open your oven door at all until it's been in there for at least 45 to 50 minutes and then you want to just flip your tray around to ensure a more even baking. So as you can see here, I have my right hand holding onto where I twisted the bag and my left hand just holding the middle of the bag to try to stabilize it as I just hold the tip horizontally paralleled to the baking tray and just piped it around in a circle and tried to flick off at the end such that the meringue pulled and connected back into the rose. Don't worry if your roses kind of look like they're falling as you are piping it on because while you bake it, it's going to rise a tiny bit making your roses more distinct. And because my oven is so small and my baking tray is tiny, I just put random drops and lines of my mixture until I used up all of my meringues. Don't worry about these, they would not spread so you can put them as near as you want them. But not too close, of course, because they will stick if they touch each other. So now my meringues have just been in there for about an hour and 45 minutes, and I just used a little cap thing that I found lying around the house to leave my oven door ajar so that the meringues cooled inside the oven gradually. I knew it was completely cooled when I was able to just use my hands and remove the tray without an oven mitt. So once that is done, you just take it out and just eat it. Meringues taste best the day they are made immediately right after they finish cooling. They are the best because they'll be crisp and once you bite into them, they just crack and dissolve. Mm, I just wanted you guys to be able to hear that crack sound. Oh my god. Anyway, if you guys plan on storing these, store it in an airtight container and stick them in the fridge. They should last around 3-5 to five days, but they definitely taste best as soon as they come out of the oven. Anyway, have fun with this. I hope this video has been helpful to you guys. If you guys have enjoyed it, please don't forget to like, comment and subscribe. Until next time, I'm Cheryl Ann from Cherry Lane's Cupcakes.